if your documents say you're going to exclude a tenderer who's not up to date at the start of the award procedure, then you ha basically have to exclude them if they're not up to date at the start. This goes back to the principle that if you say in the tender documents you're going to exclude, you cannot change your mind. So even if they pay while the award procedure is going on, you can still exclude them, and indeed you have to if you've said that in the tender documents. All right? And again, I think that's no different under the 2014 directive. Um, there is something in Article 57.4 which talks about, um, you know, that, that the exclusion for non-payment of taxes is only for past non-payment. Um, what that means is that if somebody didn't pay their taxes last year, even if they were in default by a large amount, and then they pay, if you start a new award procedure, you can't use that ground of non-payment of tax to exclude them because they haven't paid last year if they've paid once you've started the award procedure, yeah? It's not a kind of sanction for things they've done in the past. It only relates to have they paid at the time that the procurement procedure's going on. So that, that was clear from the old case law. It's now very clear in the directive. Um, however, I think, you know, you can still exclude for grave professional misconduct if they've, you know,